50 summers, hundreds of group stage matches, 45 single elimination matches. Two champions arose from those tournaments, all pointing to this moment. 14 summoners fight for the right to be called the VBCs, one above all. Welcome to Vegas Battle World. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in for another matchup in Battle World, the fourth and final tournament of Season 1 of the Vega Battlegrounds Championships. These summoners had to qualify for this. We started off with 14. Four have advanced. Happy McMuffins, Tom Jarvis, McLinks, and Andrew the Rough. Yesterday, we had another knockout match between Nick136 and Karate Mike, and today we're following up with another one. Here in Group A, Happy McMuffins won it by besting both of these summoners. Usafa Gaming, Bitter Seal, the winner moves on. They survive. They advance. I'll let you know how we're going to do that. It's going to be very exciting. Make sure you pay attention to my Twitter feed because I have a feeling that's going to be uh, influential there. The loser will have to just be very satisfied with their performance, just even making it to this. You had to qualify for this tournament. Be satisfied with that. Phenomenal being ranked in the top 16 players in the whole VBC. The winner survives. They move on. Look for them in more matchups today. This is Group A Action, Usafa Gaming versus Bitter Steel. The links to all of these competitors, but in, and definitely the two that you're seeing right here, is in the description. Make sure you check them all out and support them. We also have a different format. Now, this is something I've been looking for for quite a long time. Make these screens a little bit larger. I don't know how much larger the gameplay is, but I do think it is slightly larger. Let me know how you like it, how you enjoy it. You can leave a comment. In the stream when this goes on video on demand and uh and we'll continue to to uh do our best here to do our best to get the best viewing experience possible for everybody keep in mind we have different aspect ratios it's always a little difficult to work with because it is a horizontal rectangle i believe is the shape it's been a while since i've been in kindergarten but i'm pretty sure these are horizontal rectangles being you seem like someone who would know that sort of thing wilson what's going on laser teletam how you all doing? As the matches get started here, I'll do my best to time uh, line up the times. I don't know if we'll have a co-host today, so we'll maybe be interacting with the chat a little bit more than normal, but we'll keep our eye on the matchup itself. And then the theme for these matchups, the theme for these matchups, as you know, we enjoy that, and this is Battle World, so it's designed to be intense. Have some fun with these summoners. It's Delete Domino. Inspired by none other than Simula67, a phenomenal, phenomenal YouTube channel and community member here for MCOC. And we have named it Bar Simister. And you can see that in the bottom right hand corner there. Uh, shapes, you failed that in kindergarten too. It's amazing you and I have done so well, despite not knowing if these are rectangles or if they're horizontal or vertical. Yeah, you know, shows, shows how important that stuff is. Uh, um, Showing my age with the video on demand. <laughs> what are they called? What's it called, Wilson? What What is a person supposed to call them? You know, I got to speak to my fellow boomers out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not technically a boomer. Please don't uh, assume that was true. That was purely a joke. All right. So we can see the drafts going on here. I didn't realize the match had already started this much. We'll keep an eye on that. Looks like the first set of bands is Valkyrie, Spot, and Tigra. Very smart bands there. Get rid of Bitter Steel's Valkyrie. Kind of surprised to see Spot, although it does make sense. Remember, we are using the Victory Track nodes, which I will have to refresh my memory on what those are. And then on the other side, it looks like Bitter Steel is getting rid of Sasquatch, Human Torch, and Future Ant-Man. And Future Ant-Man is one I know I like to get rid of because I do not have him. I don't have him. I don't have Viv. I don't have Adam Warlock. And I see them come up, and, uh, and I don't want other people using them. I also think the Human Torch ban is often a sign of, of confidence. It's typically a, I want to let my deck and my skills beat you. I want to remove that nuke from the table. So that's how I usually interpret that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Bitter seems like a pretty humble young man, though, as I've gotten to know him. I don't think he would say those words. I am going to say them, though. Uh, American KT, you got that right. We're like a triangle. I don't know. Circle. It's some sort of shape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like Bitter Seal's stream is quite a bit ahead, so I'm going to pause it till we can get these lined up. 
I'll go ahead and make sure I am live on Yusafa too. That could often be part of Oh yeah, Yusafa is way ahead. Way ahead. Let's jump straight to this, everyone. We know I know we just missed a lot of action. I don't know why this happens when we cover matches, but it does sometimes. I will pause Yusafa's as we watch. This is gonna be a really nice. I've been enjoying the heck out of Kate Bishop. She has been phenomenal. She's been phenomenal. It's gonna be in BGs, her her rotation is pretty simple. You're seeing bitter do there. Those SP1s, those cold snaps are really going to build up. You he's not even doing it at the moment because it just didn't uh pan out. You can hit into the defender's block and that will pause them, I believe. And then if you knock them down with your heavy, I believe it refreshes. You can get that nice crush passive. Not surprised to see that Kingpin just, just going down. And she's going to actually beat that Archangel. She's going to be that Archangel. Apologize for missing a little bit of that fight there, folks. But uh, we got we got a lot going in. KB balling special. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I've used her, KT. I'm going to get a video out on this at some point. This month, is I'm seeing the calendar and I may have been a bit ambitious. But I've even been able to use her on the current um, the current Gladiator circuit. It, it's a little different. So obviously, you have to play a little bit slower. You can't be quite as aggressive. But she's been she's been huge for me. Uh, Team Yusafa, I love it. Hussein, how you doing? Wilson, uh, saying hello to KT1. I think that makes a lot of sense. Faust, what's up, bud? Uh, love the time slot. Yeah, this is when they're able to go. Uh, Bitter being in the UK and Yusafa being located on the East Coast there. This is when it made sense for them. And I was able to get this time basically taking my lunch break. So we'll be doing this quick. I, I should be able to stick around though for, for the whole thing. So don't worry. I want one of these to go seven. We haven't had a round go a full seven yet. I, I hope this one goes a full seven. Uh, her taunt. That's right. I forgot that Kate does have like an, in, it's not an invisible taunt. I can't think of what the actual term is or how that worked out, but that's right. She does have something like that built in. I haven't even thought about how that's been helping me, but it has. You're right. Old man, easy. What's going on? All right, so here we go. We're going to see this. Uh, we, do we have Hulk on defense? We do. We have Hulk on defense. This may have just been a best option available sort of thing. I uh, We'll see. And then, like I said, let me know how you all are enjoying the layout. I I, I believe in giving credit where credit is due. I uh, saw a screenshot today from the tournament that McLynx hosts. Extremely high level, extremely high skill tournament there. Uh, the link to McLynx's Twitch channel is in the description. Make sure you check, check, that, check that out. And I saw this layout and I thought, you know what? I think he's squeezing in a couple, maybe another inch or so of screen. I like that. I want to show it. So I, I'll admit I have almost completely copied it. And uh, and I, I appreciate that. I am thankful for it. Yusafa doing a nice job up there of handling uh, Spider-Man Supreme. I, what I assume he's doing is baiting the heavy, punishing it, and then letting the cooldown on the visible timer go. Yep, that's exactly what it appears he's doing. He's triggering it and then backing off. That's a rank five Cersei up there for Bitter Steel. This looks like, I think, I think he's going to close it out, though, before Scorpion can finish off that Spider Supreme. And I think he's winning the health pool battle regardless as well. So it looks like Bitter's going to go take this first one 2-0. Oh, much better than people. Uh, I assume needing to be awakened, though, right, with that Unstoppable? Especially with Inequity, you get those energy vulnerabilities up, and yeah, Inequity slows you down. That's true. Okay, that's a really good point. For who doesn't know, I think they do, just to kind of help. Uh, translate there a little bit, or not to translate, but explain. I do this a lot with DLL, and a lot of people have on call. They make these very high-level points, and then sometimes I think a player like me uh, needs an extra step in there, right? So um, inequity being the defensive tree mastery, reducing, I think it's the attack value of the uh, other champion, I guess, or the opponent, based on how many debuffs there are. There's a lot of a lot of um, science champions run it. I know I run it full-time now. I do enjoy a lot of science changes. It is helpful. And then I think, KT, I believe you covered it pretty well on your Cassie. Uh, the Cassie kind of, it's a bit of a fiasco. I think it's a, a fiasco at this point with her uh, rebalancing slash nerf, uh, whatever you want to call it, and then the whiffing. I love Cassie Lane. I think she's a phenomenal champion. I got a video out on her today. My alliance mate, Crisp, has a phenomenal boss solo with her. I've been using her in Tier 1 Alliance War. 
Uh, I've used her. She's been an absolute MVP for me in Battlegrounds, almost no matter the meta, the current Glider Circuit one. She's been phenomenal because she's debuff immune. She's won defensive matchups for me because she has immunities, right? I think it's to poison and shock. And then also once she's quote unquote fixed, nerfed, whatever term you want to use, when you still run inequity, if you do, she's still going to get to that really, really tanky level with the taunt. And I believe K21 uh, covered that really well in his video on her. Make sure you check that out. Uh, Zach, what's up, dude? How you doing? Fintech. Yeah, the scoreboard is not accurate. I have to update it. I fell a little behind here. Uh, but Bitter is winning 2-0. I also have to get used to my completely new setup here. I want to make sure I don't. Yesterday, I wrote the wrong score. I tried to give a couple wins to, to Nick. I thought he was going to win some of those matchups, and I was ready to put the score up for him. And then Mike just uh, made a phenomenal move. Nick also had a couple whiffs from some relics, which is extremely frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. Did some battlegrounds myself today. Um, and I had the bug where there's no score. There's no timer. And I was going up against Nick Fury. I had purposely placed a defender that I knew would stall for a long time. And so I used an attacker that I knew would also take a long time with Fury. And I got to the point where I was pretty sure the fight was almost over, but I wasn't positive. I chose to send him into a second life. And wouldn't you know it, about five seconds later, the fight ends and I lose because Nick Fury was at like 55 or sorry, like 65 percent health. And then I had the really, really fun one where it took about 40 to 50 seconds for me to enter the fight. And wouldn't you know, it, I lose on time. So that was a fun way to lose two matches. Wow, uh, K21 has already answered it there in the chat, but for anyone who's listening and not watching, uh, in equity, I go, I go the full three or three, just like KT. It's, it's a phenomenal one. Uh, we cover this a lot in like my battlegrounds tier list too, Faust. When I think we initially promoted Havoc uh, up a tier, we talked a lot about why he, that can help him be a really good defender uh, and those sort of things with all those debuffs and things like that. Tilatam, yeah, the relic with Fiend Man, it is, especially because it's, it's a really nice, important part of strategy here in Battlegrounds. That's why you see so many players using it. We started seeing this in tournaments, the really high tier. They were utilizing the striker, right? Uh, so it's, I agree. I, it's just very, very frustrating. This is very frustrating. Okay. Well, if you've seen a lot of my tournaments, you know that I, I don't worry too much about the first two rounds. Of course, if I was competing in it, if I had qualified... I would want to win them both. I'd rather be up 2-0 than down 2-0. But I really feel like the first two rounds, the champions or the competitors are still feeling each other out. They're kind of getting a sense. Every once in a while, we'll see a, a summoner come out. And they're just on fire. They're warm. They're ready to go. They're not cold. They've got a plan. And it's just working. It's the third set that I tend to think, okay, here's where we're going to find out. Or we may be going best of seven. Is there a shift in uh, the momentum or not? Let's go ahead and see how this goes. Uh, Tiger obviously can do Tiger things. So I want to see how that works out. She's able to keep up that neutralize, but Archangel versus a Fury can be a phenomenal matchup. We'll need to see if Fury is willing to throw his specials. We all know what that's like when Fury decides to go extremely passive. That's also a seven star uh, America Chavez. So there's gonna be a little bit more resiliency there with the uh, What's it called? The CR, the champion rating, I believe it's called, or competitor, challenger, something like that. Some word that starts with a C. We've already established Americans are not good at shapes. Spelling's not also our strong suit. We're good at other things. So it looks like there's a little mistake there, and Bitter is going to pay the price for that SP2 out of Chavez. I'm wondering if this was a bit of a strategic throw on his part, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what his strategy was and if it pays off. Yusafa has been pressed to the SP3, then has a little mistake there. These are the sorts of things that happen in Battlegrounds. Competitive mode, mistakes, I think, are more likely. That's why we see them so much in, in Alliance War as well. And then, um, of course, in a tournament where it's you're streaming it and then you have someone covering it as well. A lot of people watching. Looks like he was going for the SP3 trick. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I was watching... Bitters fight a little bit more than Yusafa's. I thought Bitters would be a little bit more interesting than seeing Archangel against Nick Fury. I would imagine he'll come away with the win just due for nothing else to the health pool. So now they're at one to one, heading into the second one. Bitter Steel sending the doe eyed Hella. I think trying to get a little sympathy out of Yusafa, but Yusafa will feel no sympathy for him. There will be no quit. There will be no quit. 
Strike first, no mercy, I believe is what Yusafa has on the back wall there. It's hard to make it out, but I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Thanks, B. I uh, appreciate it. I've been asking for, you know, just a little bit of feedback on it. I did get this set up from uh, McLink, so full credit to him. I thought it was really, really nice. It looks beautiful, and I do think it shows a little bit more of the fights, which is ultimately what we're shooting for. All right, Masakri versus Hulkling. I, I want to see both of these. I want to see both of these. How will the crit resist of Killmonger potentially dampen, lessen the damage of Juggernaut, and then will... Better still be able to play Masakura in a way that gets around a lot of that healing, which can make Hulkling so annoying to fight. I think they're both in the setup stage of their fight, so it's not surprising that we're almost 20 seconds in and very little damage has been done on either side. This right here, this SB2, we're going to learn a lot about how this is going to go for Yusafa. I think he's wanting a little more health to come off, and he also threw it into reverb, took quite a bit of damage himself. Just the health loss could be a big difference. But on the other side of the screen, Masakura's got to start doing some damage here. Bitter does a really nice job of backing off, not throwing this SP2 into Hulkling's Indestructible that came off, and you saw him back up. It's going to cost him some time, but he's playing the long game here. Same thing happened. Let's see if he can set it up now. There he does. I don't think he got Hulkling to block, though. I don't think Hulkling bought that little pause long enough to block. It does look like Yusuf is going to finish Killmonger, but at what price? He's lost 87% of his health. That being said, if Hulkling comes out of this fight with 100% health, uh, this is often what I talk about, folks. I don't care how I win. In fact, often I will win ugly. You don't need to have the highest score in the game. You just need to score more points than your opponent. And we might be looking at that right here to decide the second set, which is one to one. Scoreboard will be updated in a minute. There's that big SB2 that Bitter's been trying to set up. The first one didn't work. As you can see, if it had, he would come away with the victory here. We'll see if this turns out. He's trying to get as much damage as he can in these closing 10 seconds. He's down 10 seconds now. I'm very excited to see this scoreboard. And you saw the, you know, there it is. The little fist bump. That's the sort of thing that completely can shift momentum in, in a tournament. We've talked about that a lot. When you get a win that you were not expecting, when, you, when you're sitting there waiting, you're wondering, you're thinking, there's no way I'm going to win this, but it's a tournament. I'm going to stay tough. You never know. And then you're just waiting for your opponent's score to reveal itself, to be revealed. And then you get that win. It's a big deal. I've seen so many matches shift. The total momentum of a match can shift on something like that. Now, this was in set two, which I was telling you, I typically don't think is that big of a deal. We'll see. We'll see if this carries through into, into the rest. Let's get a best of seven. Come on, guys. Let's go the best of seven. Till the 10, exactly. I think that first missed SB2 that Bitter was setting up, that was that i mean there's a lot of things that could have quote unquote been the difference but if that lands better wins for sure absolutely could not agree more <laughs> wayne wayne hulkling does not give up he is a man he's a hulkling right i love that champion absolutely love him he's been bothering me a lot though in the current <laughs> in the current meta i have not enjoyed fighting him nor using him other people seem to have figured it out better than me I believe we've already seen a shift in bands with Bitter now going with a Jessica ban. I don't think he had that earlier, sticking with the Human Torch. And I think Yusafa's also switched up too. I don't think he had Rintra originally uh, banned. Potentially he did. It just, I don't think so though. That was a 2 0 Yusafa. I thought it was 2 1. It ultimately won't uh, matter with the way that we're going. So for those who are wondering, because I know this tournament's a little bit more complex with 14 people in it. We had three group, uh, four groups of three. Finn and Legacy had won themselves number one seed, so they're directly into the uh, champion's bracket. And the way this is going to work out is the number one 
the winners of each group have, have qualified. I think I showed you the tournament bracket in a different in a different stream. I can sh bring it up later if we want. And then these number twos are then going to have a bit of a playoff to go directly into what we're calling the Deadlands bracket, the uh, the basically the consolation bracket. This is a dual loss tournament. It's double elimination. And I wanted that to be the case for everybody. So that's why the loser of, of today's match, their season one will be done. We'll see them in season two, hopefully, if they're willing to continue playing. And the winner of today's match gets seated exactly uh, directly into the consolation bracket. So ultimately, this, the score uh, of each one won't matter. That I do want to be correct, though. Um, thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Uh, KT, you don't deck whole clean. I just found them confusing to use. I I will say, though, I think I've been one in four today, so I've dropped a bit, and I'm pretty sure at least two of my opponents used him effectively against me. Maybe I'm confusing it with yesterday a little bit, but I know he's been used effectively against me, and I just I can't. Um, I struggle. I struggle. Someone's probably going to clip that. Just get a clip of me saying I struggle over and over. It'd be pretty funny. <laughs> All right. So we've got more Tiger here. And then we're going to see Juggernaut. I know I know Yusufa likes Juggernaut. Has really great success with him. So I think we'll probably see a better fight than we did in that Juggernaut versus Killmonger. Tigra versus Absorbing Man can go phenomenally. The spacing and the, the need and the want to punish... Absorbing Man specials with a heavy attack just fits in so naturally into Tiger's gameplay. And he's knocked, he being bitter, has knocked Absorbing Man out of Uru. And the reason that's important is all that physical resistance that Absorbing Man has when he's in Uru. It looks like Bitter's doing really well. The senses are starting to go low, but if he can get off one more special too think he's going to close this out. Let's see if this finishes off Absorbing Man. Nope. Nice little intercept there, and then takes a hit. And then the healing. The healing of Absorbing Man starts to take its toll. It starts to come in, it messes with you, and you're thinking, will you please just die? And then Carl says, no. No, it will not. Uh, looks like Yusuf is having a little difficulty there with Fury's SP1s. This is the second time I've seen him uh, send Fury into this per uh, perfect spot where he can throw his SP1 and go unblockable, which is obviously not what you're wanting. They're both struggling a little bit here, folks. Uh, they, I think they both will, were going to look back and wish that they had taken this fight better. I know for a fact they both can do these fights better. And it looks like Bitter is going to go ahead and finish that off and take the point for the first game of set three. Faith through fire. Congratulations on that awesome pool, dude. She is, uh, she's a beast. I, I, I like her very, very much as you know, or you might not know, but now you do. I think she's going to be phenomenal. I think you could want her awakened for like the full use right there. I think that's the what will allow you to finish off Fury, if I remember correctly. I don't remember if that's the awakened ability. Yeah, it's got to be because uh, you want those neuroshocks to turn into passives. But I think that alone will be a big deal. We've already seen Fury causing problems twice in this in this match today when he goes into that second life. All right, we're seeing Feature Ant-Man come into play. Yeah, Feature Ant-Man was banned, I think, in the first set. I remember seeing that. So he's already coming into play. We know how strong he can be. I do believe Mojo, though, is one of his best counters. And then we'll see um, Overseer here doesn't have a way to really handle the incinerate aura from Mephisto, but he's going to ramp as, you know, whenever the uh, opponent gets those bars of power. So he'll enter cosmic mode pretty early here. In fact, we're going to see it in just a few seconds, see how Yusafa decides to handle it. He's going for it. He's going for it, for it now. I think this is smart. The healing of Mephisto has kicked in. A really nice intercept out of Yusafa. 
The healing is still going on. He's going to have plenty of time on his cosmic mode, and he's going to finish that fight right there. Uses his striker. It does not whiff. Little sigh of relief from the host when you when there, when there's a chance for a bug and it does not happen. I, I really don't like them uh, in these tournaments where I know these competitors are doing their best. And Ant-Man still causes enough of a problem up there for better with that mojo. So we are 1-1 in the third set. Oh, Overseer's phenomenal. I, I uh, he's great. I, I was wrong about him when he came out. I know there's a lot of like, uh, I don't know, whatever, community sentiment about how so many people got him wrong. I will confidently, happily say I was wrong about Overseer when he first came into the game. I did not, I did not see any of that. And then I got assigned him, I think in a war boss fight, if I remember correctly. And I was playing in four Loki BG3, Taters was leader at that time. And he's like, this is what you're going to do. And he gave me this extremely detailed plan. And I was like, okay, man, I mean, but Hulkling's not that good. <laughs> and then literally destroyed Ma, caused me to dive into Hulkling's kit, or not Hulkling, sorry, Overseer's kit. And uh, he's phenomenal. There's a lot of nuggets in there that just come together so beautifully well, especially for the game is and what the game asks you to do. He's a phenomenal champion. If I awaken my seven star, he will definitely be going to rank two despite having played so much Hulk Queen. All right, so this our oh, Overseer. So this is really interesting. Watch this. Uh, this Kate fight, it, it's really about, she can do this. It's going to be about <laughs> trying to still stay aggressive. And you can see that uh, Bitter is doing that because you don't want Hulk Queen going indestructible. It just eats up the time of the cold snap, but he's going to apply it here. Ah, the SP1's going off, which means uh, Hulkling's going to get all those cosmic charges. There's probably a way to... There he goes. He he forces the block. Now he went ahead and did it anyway. All right. He's going to get up a second. And I, I would think he's going to hit the block here. Let's see what he does. He's okay. He's he went a little passive. He's letting those cold snaps do the damage. This is really smart. I'm fully engaged in the Kate Bishop versus Hulkling fight because it, it's just Kate's so good, and I want to see how Bitter does this. <laughs> you know what? Obviously, the way Bitter did it was way better than what I would have said. Fifty-one thousand score there. That is phenomenal. Really, really phenomenal. And he comes out with a full health bar. I think that's better than the ultra aggressive strategy I was saying. In trying to prevent Hulkling from getting those cosmic charges, what he did is he just let it tick down, doesn't take those blocked hits. Really nice job out of Bitter there. Really, really nice job. All right, so Bitter's going to go ahead and take the third set. He's up 2 1. I like this. This has been a back and forth. I feel like we're on our way to a best of seven. Yeah, Zach, that was that was really pretty. It, and that's a really good job of understanding the kit of both champions. And I think taking the slightly potentially slower, the less aggressive tactic that I was uh, saying, which could end up in a lot of trouble, which which could end you in a lot of trouble and definitely some health loss. Obviously, uh, that score shows it right there. Yusuf is going to... he. I think he should ban Cersei. <laughs> I think he should. It's a rank five... It's been causing problems. He's smiling, though. <laughs> Oz fan, you know how you know it, my friend. I, I had my people call your people. We got the schedules lined up, and I told Bitter and Yusafa, this is when you're playing your matchup. It's when O's fans available. And they were like, absolutely. <laughs> all right, let's see if the bands change at all. We've got Human Torch, Jessica Jones, and Sassy. Those have stayed the same. And as called, Cersei is off the table. Yusuf is like, I do not want to deal with that anymore. I didn't like the movie, and I don't like her. Get her out of here. We're seeing that seven star over, uh, overseer again, uh, to no surprise. Hopefully, again. 
And and Yusafa going, oh, he'd make the switch to no, he's okay. He's really having fun with me up there. He went, he got rid of the Hulkling, brought back in Scorpion. I think that is smart when you see Mojo and Tiger on the other side of the screen. Thank you, Ozpan. I, I've been I always want to give credit, and since you called out, I'll do it one more time. This was uh, completely borrowed, just one hundred percent inspired by. I saw McLinks and McLinks channel is in the description of this stream. He's a competitor in this tournament as well. He hosts his own very high skill uh, battlegrounds tournament. I saw the layout today and I was like, I think that does a better job of showing a little bit more of the fight screens. Uh, and I had spent some time readjusting it today. So I appreciate you noticing everyone. Please go give uh, McLinks the credit and the support that he deserves for that. Get Ozvan up on the board. Thank you for the generous support. I always appreciate it. Yusafa has R2 SIG 40 Korg. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, hopefully we, we see it come into play. I'm surprised it has not been banned. I forgot about that. I Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Faust, I wish I wish I Doom had a little bit more. I, I, I wish there was a little. I wish there was a little less in his budget, let's say, for destroying Bishop because he does it so well, and a little bit more for elsewhere. I'm not sure how though. I'm not. I, I don't. I never claim to be good at knowing how to design a champion. I, I imagine it's incredibly difficult. You, uh, Nick Fury is just giving yourself a fits up there. This is the third fight where oh, Fury is just having a field day. He is treating Hercules like Realm of Legend Wendell Shoulder up there. He's just like, how quickly can I solo this fight? But Hercules and Yusuf are going to are gonna fight back out. They got out of the corner. Not much else Yusuf can do. Has to go for the intercept. Does pull it off. Nicely done. And he, you know, you're never out. When you're, you've got Hercules, you are never out of it. You are never out of it. So let's see how that goes up there. We'll keep our eye on it. And then Mojo, I believe he's just setting up the ramp here. Yeah, he's got the passive degens going. Nothing that Kingpin can do with those passives. He's just going to sit there and tick, 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 like MP Blaze likes to say. We need to get MP Blaze playing more Mr. Negative again. I, I miss the tick, tick, tick. He's going to get that SP3. And I think this is what we're seeing here is a really, again, just nice job of Bitter being patient. I'm not sure he wanted to be pushed to that SP3, but it can happen. Being patient, getting a superior score to then if he was just playing a little bit more risky, and then trusting in his defenders. Nick Fury says, Bitter, thank you for trusting me. We soloed this Hercules. We soloed him. And so Bitter Steel takes the lead in the fourth set as well. Thank you, Primal Scrape. I appreciate it. It is a, a new format completely inspired after seeing McLinks' format in his own tournament. Make sure you check that out. The link is in the description. Uh, AFO, Nick has been terrorizing Yusafa. Earlier, we thought that he Yusafa would be seeing Cersei in his dreams, in his nightmares this evening. I believe it is now Nick Fury. Uh, he and Cersei will be teamed up to prevent Yusafa from sleeping for at least the duration of this week. And uh, I think we got to give this the edge in this matchup to Archangel, of course, there is a little RNG involved. I hate Rintra. It's just, I hate him. So you never know. Uh, like right there, we're seeing it. Better does a nice job of blocking these hits. He's trying to build up some poisons, and it just doesn't happen. He finally gets a few going. He's got a Nero up. He's probably going to get a couple. Gets three. So we're going to start to see Rintra start to slowly, slowly, slowly tick down. Nice job by Bitter of blocking that special one, again, to get more of the poisons up. He could have evaded it. He chose not to, to get more poisons up, which allows him to get more of those neuros. We're starting to see the neuros take their effect up there. 
And then on the other side, it looks like Killmonger's doing what he's supposed to do. He is, at worst, at worst, he buys you time. He's a staller. He's going to take time at best. The reverb will kick in. Maybe he lands a special two. Maybe, uh, like me, your opponent, stupidly attacks him to Killmonger after he's thrown his special one and he counter punches them. But you're ultimately seeing exactly what Killmonger is designed to do. He takes time, and the longer the fight takes, the more likely your opponent is to make a mistake. And Bitter is going to go ahead and take this fourth set 2 0. Well done. I think that was a, a well done, well played by Bitter. You still have PS PTSD from Yusafa's R2 Domino? Yeah, you know, the theme for this this week, the Delete Domino Bar Sinister, was uh, come up with before this season even started. I, I don't remember whose stream I was on, but I had made a couple comments about how this was coming. I was kind of trying to tease it a little bit. I'm sure on some level, Yusafa feels like this was maybe targeted at him, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, no one likes Domino. What's up, Strands? Thanks so much for being here. Infamous. What's up, dude? The Infamous from one of the greatest battle battle groups in SSX, BG1. Overseer is really good for Killmonger. Okay. I buy it. I believe you. Uh, Don't hate Moo. Love the Moo. <laughs> So, Tam, I, yeah, I mean, I might actually, I would consider it taking my rent to 565. Uh, a lot of it's going to depend on what these July 4th offers look like and stuff like that. If the if there's a lot in there to uh, like some five, six gems, six star stuff, you know, I, you obviously I'll, I'll use them. I'll be very excited about it. That's actually my hope. Like if I could request anything from Kabam, Kabam, if you're listening, we would love some five, six gems. Please don't make us decide on those resources between our seven stars and six stars. Make it easy on us. Make it easy. Uh, and, and then I will do that. Um, and Mitt Rintra would be one. If for no other reason, just to cause pro to cause pain, to cause problems and pain for my opponents. Uh, I don't know if you saw about the paragraph. I didn't see a video, but I haven't been on YouTube in a few hours, so I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Faust. I appreciate it. All right. So the bands, uh, we're going with Tigra, Spot, and Valkyrie. Does not want Bitter using Valkyrie. Bitter's done a nice job of finding alternative options, though. Yusuf was happy. He's like, finally, I get Archangel. Thought we were going to get to see America, but no. Here's Rintra there to cause problems, if nothing else. And Kingpin. Might get to see some really high level Mr. Negative play. Mr. Negative is one of those champions where those really ultra skilled players use him exceptionally well. I'm excited to see that. I hope we get to see that in this matchup. And then Spidey Supreme. I'm not seeing a natural. Well, uh, you know, Archangel could handle that pretty, pretty solidly over there for Yusafa. But Spidey Supreme is a bit of a dual threat, so it could be used offensively as well. And then we're going to get to see seven star Chavez. She caused some problems on defense. I think it was in set one being a little bit more tanky against a uh, Tiger, if I recall correctly. Curious to see how Yusafa decides to implement her if it's defensively or offensively. What's up, Antrasis? How you doing, bud? Mercy Hulkling on defense. I think we might see the Spider Supreme. Here we go. This is kind of what Spider Supreme's, I think, most intended matchups. There's a lot of buffs, though. This is one, it was one of his intended ones when I was initially testing out Spider Supreme. I actually didn't like it. I struggled to prevent it from going to a special three. And, you know, war or something like that, really not the end of the world. In Battlegrounds, it's not something you're looking for. But I know players have significantly surpassed my knowledge on Spider Supreme. So, again, I'm going to be watching that side of the screen to see how Bitter handles this. 
All right, so he's got the form. He does use it to land his heavy. He's lost some health here, though, and I don't think the heal potency will be enough to get him back going. Let's see. Well, up to five of them now. Uses the invisible again very well. And he's going to throw the SP2. Does a nice pause and to the block. Yep, yeah, uh, as I said, these players have significantly surpassed my Spidey Supreme knowledge, and you're seeing it right there. Jeez, that looked absolutely textbook. I can't imagine it going better than that. 54,000 points. Yeah, it uh, absolutely destroyed. Infamous, the key with Spice Supreme for Sulking is to throw it when you got it. Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, the, without, you know, see, with no face cam or not being directly there, just watching the demeanor. I feel like you can get a feel for how the players are feeling, too, by by the way they play, uh, the kind of aggressiveness and things like that. They look like a very controlled, kind of natural feeling to the way Bitter was f uh, fighting that whole match. I feel like he knew exactly what he was doing using the, it's not a phase. I don't remember exactly what Spidey Supreme calls it, but it felt like he used that strategically like at least three to four times in there, landing intercepts and uh, throwing specials. I feel like he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, and threw it into block. Yep. Yeah, for those who are wondering, uh, uh, the, the chat is kind of explaining why that SP, I think it was the two, was thrown into the block. That nice little pause. And that little pause failed him in an earlier matchup with Masakre, but for the most part, uh, I've seen Bitter nail that little pause almost every single time with these champions that want to be hitting into block. Really nicely played. And I think this is potentially it. I've been interacting with the chat quite a bit. Uh, I think if Bitter wins this one, we may see a 4-1. So I, let's all cheer for you, Safa. And this is definitely a natural matchup for, for Rintra. The biggest thing is you want to make sure Cersei doesn't get off a heavy before you can get up a neutralize. As long as that doesn't happen, you're pretty golden. You want to keep these neutralizes up. So this the neutralize fell off. Really nice little intercept there, right? Because he doesn't want that heavy to go, like like just happened. Uh, let's see. I think he's trying to set up this nice SP2. Let's see if he does. Uh -oh. He's got he's got a problem there. So that 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 right there, that's exactly what he didn't want. When he was holding block there, I imagine he was going for a re-parry. The problem with that is is uh it 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 kind of triggers the AI to sometimes throw the heavy right to Break your block, and that's the last thing you want to see in a matchup with Cersei, right? If you've got Doom, you want to get up the Stagger. If you've got a Neutralized Champion, you want to get up the Neutralized. And uh, I, I think Bitter's about to take this one home because that Glancing buff is now up. And as you know, Rintra can't do anything about it once it's already there. Yeah. And and there it is. I mean, we'll we'll wait till this is over. But I think that was it. So bitter steel comes in, competes in one tournament. Uh, I think it was the three star. It does so exceptionally well in a single tournament that he qualifies for this fourth and final one, based on the scoring algorithm come up with by another by Adam, who's been keeping stats for the whole thing. And he's advanced into uh, the full knockout stages into... Well, now, yeah, he is. This was a knockout match itself, too. But I think he's showing why he is so well-respected and so well-regarded in the community. Phenomenal, phenomenal showing from him. I know Yusafa's going to want some of these back. Yusafa is a, a better player than he showed, I think, today. It looked like maybe there's some... Ouch, man. Hey, that what's hurts, up? Vega. Well, hey, you know what, man? Uh, I told you guys before the tournament... I, I, but I, I think you are. I think you're a much better player than you showed today, my friend. I, I think you should be proud of of the showing in general. But uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you're a great player. So I, I'll I'll, let, I'll turn it over to you though. Uh, how are you feeling about this? 
I mean, I feel okay. I mean, dude, I, I honestly, I did not uh, expect any different. Um, I just think that bitter, uh, bitter, bitter still, he lost that one match against me. So, uh, therefore, uh, I wrecked him. Um, but, but, you know, Hey, you know, it's a game. I'm not getting too upset about it. You know, I, I do feel like I could have made some better decisions on matches, whatever I could have played better, you know, in some areas, but whatever, you know, I'm good. Um, I just, I think that, uh, it, as we have progressed through these seasons of battleground tournaments that you've been hosting so graciously, gotten better and better players uh bitter came out you know in the three-star tournament and you know just absolutely wrecked everybody um and you know i i played um i've played better and better players every single season so uh thank you for allowing me to be part of this tournament and uh yeah bitter, great job man thanks i've just hopped in i wanted to let you finish but um th thank you for the kind words and uh ggs mate that was I, I can't tell you how stressed i was going into this I mean, your roster is just the thing of nightmares. And, I mean, I feel like you sell yourself a little short. You are a very skilled player, otherwise you wouldn't be up here in, in 4 Loki and doing everything you're doing. But, yeah, you are uh, a worthy opponent. And um, I, I know you've said that you might not be doing future tournaments, but I really hope to see you in them. I really do. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it, it really has, uh, Began, and I'll reiterate again, I mean, the quality of people that you have in this lineup, man, are just amazing. And it, it makes it really difficult for people who consider themselves like mid-tier uh, players, uh, which I do consider myself because, I, you know, I'm friends with everybody. I got, you know, FinTech, I got Karate Mike, I got Legacy, you know, every bidder. I mean, everybody is just, there are some really, really good players. And this tournament, this culture that you have brought uh, us all into really does attract the best of the best. And it gets really hard for those mid-tier players like myself, who I consider myself, uh, to compete with these guys just because there are such great quality people out there. So over to you, Vig. You know what, Yusuf? I feel like uh, you and I are similar in that regard in that, you know, like just in the chat today, it was B McG, FinTech, uh, KT1. And I, I apologize for anyone infamous. I apologize for anyone that I'm missing because I know there's a lot of people there. Uh, they're all playing in the Celestial, right? And, and higher, right? The highest levels right. of the game. And you and I, that's who we hang out with. We're in SSX, we're in 4 Loki. You know, you're like literally friends with Legacy, Karate Mike and folks like that. Um, and so I think as a result, we kind of forget that that doesn't make us mid-tier. <laughs> that just makes us not the 0.01% of the game. Because uh, you're a phenomenal player. We've seen you do phenomenal things. And you qualified for this. I did not. Um, and so I, I, I hope you're proud of that. And I, what I, what I'm saying is like, I, I think you, there's gonna be fights where I know you've done them better. I've seen you take care of those furies and fury was giving you fits today. And I've seen you get scores in the 50 thousands against him. And today, just whatever it was today, uh, fury was giving you fits, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, better. Nice hey. performance, my friend. Uh, how, how are you feeling? Thanks, Vega. Um, I, I was really nervous, and I'm just kind of getting over those nerves as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, I knew Yusuf was going to come back with, with Vengeance from the uh, three-star tournament, and <laughs> especially since we were on, you know, even decks in that one with, with champions of the same rank, and seeing, you know, seven star rank two after seven star rank two from him i was definitely nervous going into it um my ban strategy was all over the place i really wasn't sure what i was going to be doing just because there's so much to deal with um and yeah yourself is really hard to plan for because he's just got so much i, I figured i'd get rid of the sasquatch because i've got one option for him which was spot and you ended up banning him anyway, so I'm really glad I didn't have to deal with that Sasquatch. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, it was a it was a really fun match, and uh, like I said, I, I do hope I see you suffer in future tournaments. I hope so too. I didn't I, I, I didn't realize you were you, are you retiring? Uh, sorry, you We're talking over each other. You, you please go. Uh, no, you banned my Domino, man. I mean, that was that's my ace in the hole, bro. I rank two. I know, and I don't remember whose stream it was. It was a stream before this tournament started. I could swear it was a stream where I teased that this was going to be a week. 
and I don't know how well that would have been helpful to you, but uh, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, the so, the chat asked, do you have a rank two seven star core? Yeah. That Did he never come up? Oh, he never did. Wow. Yeah, that's unfortunate, man. Um, I think he came up uh, towards the end of one pull, one draw, but uh, I needed a counter for one of his jams. Um, so I chose them, but, uh, but yeah, he's a, he's a SIG 80 rank two Korg. <laughs> oh, geez. I think the, uh, the RNG gods are a little on my side, not giving you that Korg. He would have been tough to deal with. Um, yeah. and <laughs> the other thing is that, um, my, my, one of my p strategies going into this, I was going to remove Domino from my deck and ban yours. Um, yeah. and <laughs> Vega intervened and banned Domino first. So, uh. <laughs> That was uh, very helpful from Vega. Yeah, yeah. No, Vega, I'm not going to retire, man. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to step back from, uh, from battlegrounds tournaments for a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, and just uh, take a breather and and try to get better. Um, but no, I, I'm more uh, than I more than I have ever been in the past uh, engaged with this game, uh, and this community. So uh, I'm really loving it. It's uh, it's just a time to take a step back from the battleground tournaments. Okay. I hear you. I may be doing that from my own tournaments for almost essentially the same reasons you stated. It's just how good the players are now. Um, and I will, I'll, no, I'll tease it now. I am trying to set up, I, it's the very beginning stages, a, uh, a bit of a, I'm going to call it a pro-am, where I would like to have uh, 40 and older. It's a senior tour. So I want players 40 and older. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking myself, Yusafa, maybe Ghost Dog. And uh, team us up with Kabam employees. And, oh, really? Yeah. So I'm already I'm already working on that. Some groundwork has been laid. It may never come to fruition, so uh, don't hold me to it. But I do think it would be very very fun. There, I know there's a fourth there's a fourth YouTuber out there that's at least around that age bracket, and I can't. I apologize because shoot. Uh, but anyways, I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, well, if you're over forty, you're uh, if you're fifty, you're over forty. Old man, easy. So you'd be able to be on it. So you saw, hopefully I can talk you into competing in that one if I can put it together. Oh, man, and my birthday's coming up, too. So I'm going to be even older soon. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, and again, all of this being said, you were one of the top 14 competitors across four tournaments. I think that's a lot to to be extremely proud of. Yeah. No, it, again, it, it was it was a pleasure to uh, to play in these tournaments. And I look forward to a time again when, I, when, I, uh, when I'm a, a part of them. Uh, and, you know, just shout out to all of the competitors. Uh, They're absolutely fantastic. I learned so much watching your streams, Vega, and watching all the players um, uh, compete in Battlegrounds. Uh, competing gets better. Competing is FinTech. Competing is KT. I mean, it's just, it only makes you a better player and a better YouTuber uh, because, I mean, that's what we do. So, um, but thank you again, Vega, and thank you again, Better, for, for schooling me and teaching me a few things today. I hope in the future tournament you come back and school me back it's your turn to, to take it for one uh, so for everyone in the audience we actually have another matchup coming to you in four hours as we established earlier americans bad at math spelling shapes a lot of things the important thing is at 6 30 uh pacific standard time pm b mcg and dll will be going off against each other in the exact same style matchup here the winner will advance on to a bit of a mini bracket to see who can make it into the deadlands bracket um bitter steel i have not fully revealed how exactly that is going to work but you have advanced to that karate mike has advanced to that between B McG and DLL, do you have someone who you would most like to win, knowing that you will maybe face that 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 champion? Oh, it's B besides being an unfair question, I don't think there's a right answer. Mm. I mean, yes, I I was thinking at the start of this tournament, like when all sixteen of us were, or, or however many of us there were, I, I don't think I'd choose to play anyone really. That that there's a reason that everyone here has, has been selected for the tournament. So it's really hard to pick, you know, I'd, I'd love to face that person. I, I honestly can't think of one person that I'd probably feel I had a better shot against. I'm just going to turn up on the day and try and do my best. Okay. Yeah. No, I can read through the lines really well. He wants DLL. He's going to ban uh, Kate. <laughs> 
absorb and absorbing man and Mr. Fantastic. I, I, I understand what you're putting down there, Bitter. I, I can translate well for you. Uh, all right. Well, phenomenal, phenomenal performance from both these guys. I thank them both for putting on a show. I've learned so much from commenting on these matchups and watching these competitors. Thank you to everyone in the chat for the generous donation from O's fan. We'll be right back at this and what it, if my math is correct, three and a half hours for another matchup uh, to see who can qualify and whose season will be done. I'd like to let Yusafa and then Bitter Steel take us out. Yeah, I, I, again, thank you again, Vega. Uh, I think I've said everything, uh, you know, I, it's been a fantastic time, uh, past few tournaments. Uh, look forward to seeing all the competitors uh, and see who actually wins this this final uh, series of the tournament. So thank you again, Vega, and thank you again, Bitter. Um, yeah, thanks, Vega, so much for, for again, the in invitation to this tournament. I, I love being a part of them. They're so much fun really really testing myself and um well played again to you Safa, throughout all the tournaments um i hope you enjoy your break and uh, I, I do hope to see you back so um thanks again everyone for watching take care everybody we'll see you in a few hours bye-bye